this morning. Glory to God. Welcome somebody. We're allowed to shake hands these days, aren't we? Or wave to them if you're afraid of shaking them. Good morning. This morning, we shall be talking about your El Shaddai advantage. You have an, El, an advantage. Your El Shaddai advantage. Let's go to Genesis chapter 17 from verse number 1. I'll read 1 to 5. If you are there, say amen. Genesis 17, 1 to 5. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, 99, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty, or El Shaddai, the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. The background of what was happening in this man's life, if you go to the chapter before chapter number 16, you will realize that God had made a promise to Abraham about a son, and years had gone by. The boy was not showing up. So Abraham had a, a, a family meeting with Mama Sarah. They had a very interesting discussion where Mama Sarah said, well, could it be that God will give us a baby through this my housemaid, this Hagar, you know? And uh, I thought Father Abraham would have said, no, 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 woman. You are out of line here. He said, well, you know, I've also had the same thought. So they were very human. Anyway, they put this girl in the family way, and they, 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 they had the, the, the boy, Ishmael. The chapter before tells us that, uh, you know, Abraham was like 86 years old or so when uh, Ishmael was born. So, if you do the math, this will be 13 years after. In Genesis 16, verse um, 16, and Abraham was first called and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abraham. So, you can see 99 years later is 13 years. 13 years of the Almighty just looking. One, one of the encouraging things about this almighty God is that there's no mess you can put yourself in that is too deep for him to bring you out. <laughs> I mean, many problems, many problems. If you read the story, you know, there was a time Sarah drove Hagar out of the house because when she felt pregnant, she began to despise uh, Sarah herself. As, you know, and that's natural. You know, she began to say, well, I've given your husband what you couldn't give, so, and all that kind of thing. It must have been very tough for Abraham. But God was quiet for some 13 years. And when God shows up here, he's telling Abraham, hey, my friend, Abraham, you don't know who I am. I am what? Almighty. You've made a big mess. You don't know how you're going to come out of it. But I am what? Almighty. Another meaning of almighty in the Hebrew is El Shaddai. It means the all-sufficient one or the all-breasted one. You have a covenant advantage when you have somebody like this in your corner. Your El Shaddai advantage is your blood covenant relationship with the all-sufficient, almighty God. Say with me, my El Shaddai advantage is my blood covenant relationship with the all-sufficient, almighty God. You see, it's, a, it's an advantage you have. Because this God we're talking about, he has no competition. When he said he is almighty, there are many scriptures and examples of his almightiness. And I'm here to encourage you this morning that wherever you have found yourself because of this covenant, you can come out of any hole that the enemy has put you in. Hallelujah to Jesus. Jeremiah 32, 17. It says, Ah, 
Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. <clears throat> Daniel 4.35. Daniel 4.35. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and it doeth according to his will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? Hallelujah. Matthew 19, 26. Uh, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. You know, this morning I want to say to you, you are dealing with an almighty God who has no limitation. We can see examples of his almightiness throughout scripture. And I want to say that the, this all-sufficient one, he has no competition. He is a God, according to Isaiah 40, Bible says he has measured the, the, the waters of the universe in the hollow of his hands. Imagine an almighty, somebody that all might belongs to him, who can take the waters of the Atlantic Ocean, even the water of River Kaduna, you cannot measure it in the hollow of your hands. Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, he measured it in the hollow of his hands. You are dealing with an almighty God who commanded light to come out of darkness. Lazarus was dead for four days and all hope was lost. You are dealing with an almighty God who can call the dead to come forth. Am I talking to somebody in this house this morning? We are dealing with an almighty God. There were so many people to feed, but there are only five loaves and two fishes. <coughs> we are dealing with an almighty God who multiplied that resources. I want to say to you this morning, the almighty God is in your corner this morning. Your situation is not too hard for the Lord to do this morning. He's going to turn your story around in the name of Jesus. He will change your story in the name of Jesus. When they came to the Red Sea, the Egyptians were chasing. The Red Sea was before them. You are dealing with an almighty God who caused the waters of the Red Sea to freeze. The waters stood at attention while the children of Israel walked through. I want to say to a child of God, that situation against you this morning, because the Almighty God is in your corner, the water is going to freeze. Your enemies are going to freeze. And you are going to walk through on dry ground. It's not because you are better than other people. I don't know who I came to talk to this morning, but I, I want to say to a child of God, you are going to walk on dry ground. That place will dry up for you to walk through. I want to say you will go through the fire, but you will not be burned. You are dealing with an almighty God that when they threw those three Hebrew children in the fire, he jumped into the fire. He's wanting to get into the fire and escape the fire, but it's another thing for an air condition to descend from heaven and cool down the fire. I want to say to a child of God on your account this morning that hot place people say it's too hot to be there people are burned when they go in there I want to announce to you child of God you will not only go in there the air condition of my heavenly father this almighty God is coming into that fire that fire will be an air condition when you come out of that fire the smell of smoke will not be upon you they say there is a naira crunch but I want to say to a child of God you will come out with silver and gold. The Lord will bless you in this season supernaturally. We are dealing with an almighty God that the mistakes of Jacob, when they killed the Shechemites, Almighty God put a restraining order on the people that wanted to go after Jacob and his family. I want to say your mistakes can become a testimony. When you are dealing with an almighty God, like Peter, you may deny Jesus three times, but the almighty God came to look for Peter. Jacob was afraid because they were a minority people and they had done offense to the Shechemites, but God put a restraining order. I said there's a restraining order where your family members are concerned, where you are concerned. Concern. I said there's a restraining order. The Almighty God is going to see to it that the hair of your head is not singed. He's going to see to it that you are coming out of that trouble. The Almighty God is going to see to it there's a lifting for you, child of God. I'm here this morning to say to you there's nothing too hard for this Almighty God to do. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. Do I have a witness in the house of God? If you know that your God is 
is mightier. He's greater than your affliction. He's greater than where you have found yourself. Can you lift your hand this morning and give him a wave offering and give him a shout of praise in the house of God? Can somebody help me praise this God? This God that has no beginning. The ancient of days. He said, Abraham, I know there are two dead bodies, but I'm going to give you a miracle. I know you are about a hundred years old and Sarah is too old, but I'm going to give you a miracle out of two dead bodies. I'm dealing with an almighty God that has no limitation. I want to say to a child of God in this season where they are crying, when they are casting down in this house of restoration, there's going to be a lifting up. I said, there's going to be a lifting up. I said, there's going to lift if you believe with me, give them a loud shout of praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Almighty means all-breasted one, all-sufficient one, all-sufficient one. There's only an all-sufficient God when he's in your corner. Joshua had a battle one time. And before he could finish the battle, Nepa took light. You know when Nepa took, takes light in your house, what do you do? You get a generator. But when sun takes light, you can't replace sun. So Joshua had a battle. And Nepa took light. The sun, it was getting dark. And when it's dark, you cannot see. And Nepa, <laughs> and Joshua consulted heaven. And he said, I command the sun to stand still. There's no human being who can stop the setting of that sun. But when the God of heaven is behind you, I've come with that faith today to tell you that Nigeria is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. When we are dealing with this kind of almighty God, he said the inhabitants of the nations, they are like, they, they are, the nations are like dust on a scale. Your life will not go down. The almighty God is going to bring you through to the other side. Can I get a better amen in the house of the Lord? Just talking about his almightiness. So, your El Shaddai advantage is your blood covenant relationship with the almighty God. Another important key you need to understand with this El Shaddai advantage. El Shaddai advantage means God is prepared to give his life for the covenant. An El Shaddai advantage God is prepared to give his life for the covenant. God is what? Prepared to give his life for the covenant. Go to Genesis chapter 15. Ah. Now, in Abraham's day, in Abraham's day, back in the day, when you make a promise to somebody, um, you know, in Genesis 15, because, uh, okay, 15 verse 8. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a pigeon, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each one against another. But the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And then, of course, God spoke to him. Verse 17. And it came to pass, when the sun went down, it was dark, and behold, a smoking furnace, and a burning lamb that passed between those pieces. Hallelujah to Jesus. Well, the thing here is that When they made covenant back in the day, they would uh, cut these animals, just like God told him here. They would cut the animals, separate them, divide them, so their blood would form a kind of way. If you split an animal, maybe a cow or something, into two, and you separate it, there will be blood in between. When they do that, what are they saying? They are saying, 
as these animals have been killed, I myself am prepared to give my life. In Hebrews 6, 13 and 14, the Bible says, when God made a covenant with Abraham, because he could not swear by anybody greater, he swore by himself. So when they walk through that highway of blood, you, half of the, they cut it by the spine. So half of the cow is here, half of this is here, and they walk through it. And when they are walking through it, they are swearing. They are making an oath. As these animals have been divided and they have died, I myself am ready to die if I fail you. Does God need to say that? He has, he's almighty. Nobody can contest with him. In Hebrews 6, he said, because he could not swear, he swore by himself. And where I read to you in Genesis, the Bible says, when it was dark, there was a, a flaming touch, like a furnace that walked through that thing. God himself, Abraham walked through the sacrifice. God himself walked through that sacrifice. He said, Abraham, you know what? As these animals have been sacrificed here, I am ready to be sacrificed myself for you. That's why on Mount Moriah that day, when, when um, Abraham took Isaac and put him there, God said, listen, you're a covenant keeper. I will put my son on the cross. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? When, when the Almighty that has all the power in heaven and earth is swearing by his own life, he's going to keep you somebody. Can you say a better amen? I said he's going to keep you somebody. Can you say a better amen? I said he's going to keep you somebody. Can you say a better amen? He walked through the carcasses of that thing. He said there was a flaming touch, which, which is like um, the, the seven spirits of God, the, the fire at the throne of God in the book of Revelation. The spirit of God, Jesus, the, the Father, they walked through that sacrifice. God is cutting covenant. That settles it. Child of God, Jesus Christ has died. He has is the covenant partner. You see, a covenant cannot be effective except there is death. Somebody, a blood covenant, somebody must die. They must kill an animal to say, as this animal was given, I'm also giving my life. Child of God, where you are concerned, the best has been given. God has given Jesus Christ in covenant for you. And I'm assuring you, you will not pay with your life what Jesus has paid for with his blood. They may surely gather not by me, but whoever gathers against you shall fall for your sake. The blood of the covenant means that God is covenant bound to keep you. The Bible says that on the, time, on the day that Sodom and Gomorrah were overthrown, God remembered Abraham and he delivered Lot. Abraham had a covenant with God and because of Abraham, God said I cannot do this thing, I must deliver his relative. Because you are here today, just like Paul there was a shipwreck, but God said I've given you everybody about that ship. I believe there were 276 people on that ship. I want to say because of you, because of you, no family member of yours will be destroyed. Their lives will be kept, oh my God, their lives will be protected because the God of heaven, the covenant keeper he will keep his eyes upon you. He will keep his eyes upon your family. He will keep Makariba Satabaya. He will keep his eyes upon your business. They may be falling everywhere. They may be dying like chicken, but you will not die with them. You will not die with them. On the 31st of December, 2023, you will be in the house of God shouting hallelujah because the covenant keeping God has kept you. He has kept you as the apple of his eyes. I want to announce to a child child of God today. Our covenant keeping God has sworn by the blood of his own son. Therefore we are not shaken. We are not moved to the right nor to the left because God who is a covenant keeping God he is here to keep his word. Covenant keeping God there is Alpha and Omega Jehovah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh. Your El Shaddai advantage is your oneness and new identity in Christ Jesus. I've got one or two thoughts to throw in. Hopefully, I have time for it. Your El Shaddai advantage. Is your oneness a new identity? Romans chapter 6, 
from verse 3 to 6. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4 to 6. Genesis chapter 17 from verse 5 to 9. Let's see what we can read here. John 14, 8 and 9. John 17, 23. 1 Corinthians 6, 7. Know ye not, Romans 6, 3, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him, what? In baptism into death. That acts like Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. 1 Corinthians 6, 7. But he that is joined unto the Lord, 6, 17. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. John 17, 23. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved me as thou hast loved them. Mm. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Hmm. Your oneness and new identity is a covenant advantage. Bible says we were buried with him in baptism. Baptism is not just tradition. When you are baptized, it typifies the fact that when Jesus went to the cross, you went to the cross. When he died, you died with him. When he was raised up, you were raised up. The Lord Jesus that was raised up was raised up in new life and in new glory. Hallelujah. He was raised up with resurrection life. He died, he became sin when he died. He took our sicknesses. He became a curse when he died. But when he rose up from the dead, according to Hebrews 1, he said, let all the angels bow before him. Jesus is the first person to be born again. He was raised up with new life. He was raised up with the God kind of life. When he was raised up from that place, you and I were raised up with him. And we, we were not only raised up, when he ascended, we ascended on high. When he sat down at the right hand of the Father, we also sat down in him. Yes, you may say, but pastor, how can I be in Anguan Rumi and be seated with Christ in heavenly places? Friend, but you are seated with Christ in heavenly places because in the mind of God, when he died, you also died. Remember Ruth in the Bible? That Moabitish girl. She was a stranger. Nobody knew her. But when she married Boaz, Ruth was gleaning in a farm where she was supposed, she was destined to inherit. But the moment she married Boaz, something changed. By that union, by that union, anybody who was a, a reaper who was insulting her had to change their language. Child of God, I want to say there's a new man on your inside this morning. I want to say there's a new man on your inside this morning. That sinner is dead. When I gave my life to Jesus in 1976, some of you are still in heaven trying to get your visa to the world. When I gave my life to Jesus, that old man died. There's a new man that was raised up with Christ. I want to say there's a new man on your inside this morning. There will be things from your history. There will be things from your past. They say it runs in the family. It is one kind of disease. It's one kind of habit. It's people die at this particular age. People don't make it. But that DNA died when Jesus died. That DNA died when Jesus died. Let's imagine that you are a tenant in a house. And God gave you grace. You bought the house. And your landlord, your former landlord used to be... Foul, mounted, you no, know, insult you anyhow. And your former landlord shows up to come and greet you. But he forgot that he has sold you the house. I say, Auntie, when are you bringing my rent? What will be your attitude? You just smile. <laughs> okay, it seems like, uh, which rent are you talking about? This, your compound is dirty. You, you, these tenants, the way you tenants are behaving, you cannot take care of people. You know how landlords talk. They almost talk like as if they are God. What would be your attitude? Say, okay, landlord, uh, sorry. 
Maybe you forgot. Some, can you, somebody bring the document of transfer? That landlord will have to walk out. I'm here to announce to a child of God. The landlord of defeat. The landlord of infirmity. The landlord of failure. The landlord of it runs in the family. The landlord of bad habit and sin. That landlord has been disgraced. That landlord has died. There's a new man in you that looks like Jesus Christ. I want to announce to you there's no mountain you cannot climb. With Jesus in your corner, there's no mountain you cannot climb. I want to announce to you there's no hurdle the enemy has put in front of you because you are a new creation with the life and the ability of God. You are going to climb that mountain. Every enemy that has ganged up against you, they are going to fall for your sake because there's a new man in you and that new man is joined to the king of kings and the lord of lords. You cannot fail because God cannot fail. I say you will not fail because God cannot fail. When you speak a word, heaven is speaking that word. I don't know what you are going through right now. When your head speaks, your body is speaking. I speak to every living Limitation in your life that there's a new man on your inside. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Other people's businesses may be collapsing, but I want to speak to you, child of God. I want to speak to the new creation in Christ in you that you are the child of the King of Kings, uh, El Shaddai, the all sufficient one, the one that has no limitation, the one that cannot be broke, the one that has no beginning, the one that has no ending. You are one with Him, uh, and as you go, this week every mountain will bow before you every valley shall be filled before you in the name of jesus christ i want to say the host of heaven they are working for you they are working for your children lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted ye everlasting doors and let the king of glory come in who is the king of glory but the lord who is mighty in battle because you are one with god every gate before you they will be lifted. He said, I will give people for your life. I want to say to you, if they say it's over their dead body, then they will go ahead and die. Because the God of heaven, Malaka, Sharata Basayaya, because the God of heaven said, I will give, he said, because you have been honorable, I will give men for you and people for your life. You have a covenant advantage this morning. Can you lift your hand and receive that covenant advantage and say, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine man is mine. When you go through a difficult place, uh, he will be there with you. You have a covenant advantage. Jesus is in your corner. Jesus is in your corner. They may be counting other people out, but they will never count you out. Can you stand to your feet this morning and lift your hands and bless the Lord? Habasaya. Jehovah Ide. Neba I know Jehovah Jehovah Look at me very well. If you are the son of the president of the most powerful country in the world, blessed America, can anybody harass you in this world? Ah, I'm about to pray. If you have the faith, take it. I'm going to pray for you as you go. Any kind of harassment, be it financial, be it your business, be it your children, as I pray, now, you need to understand, I'm not just standing here blowing mouth. 
When there's a gift of faith on a man, you better know when to connect, otherwise you lose your visitation. See all those blind eyes and deaf ears that you saw opening? That was the gift of faith. When it's on a man, you take it. In the name of Jesus! By the faith of God this morning, every harassment against you, against your family, against your destiny, I paralyze them in the name of Jesus. Financial harassment, I paralyze you in the name of Jesus. Those that have touched you, they've touched the apple of God's eyes. And Lord, you will break their teeth. You will smite them on the cheekbone in the name of Jesus. Every circle of hell over your life, over this city, over this state, every calculation and imagination of hell, I command them to fail and to fall in the name of Jesus. And now I lose the angels of warfare. Get busy and get victory for God's people in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Now wave your hand and give me seven shouts of hallelujah like you believe it. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Glory to God. Glory. Now I you may be seated. The righteousness of Let God. me make a short announcement this morning.